Hey guys, today I want to chat about some new products from e.l.f. I've definitely run into some hits and misses, and one of the key new things on the website that you'll notice is this Aqua Beauty line. So it's kind of some different formulations of products for eyes, lips, and cheeks. They have these creamy eyeshadows that apply with a doe foot applicator. I just ordered two of those shades. I got all of the shades of these um, kind of gel type stains for the lips, and then I was really curious about these blush bronzer duos because I know e.l.f. has for a long time sold blush bronzer duos that look exactly like this, but I was curious to see whether these were just different shades or a totally different formula altogether, and they definitely are a different formula. I got this in the shade Bronzed Peach, and it's a very vibrant coral shade right here, and then um, kind of a deep but still goldeny bronzer. What's interesting about this formula to me, and what you'll notice as soon as you get it, is there's no fallout that these kick up whatsoever. They are a very different texture. They almost remind me a little bit of the ColourPop blushes because they do have a definite like half cream, half powder type feel. And because of that, while this shade looks crazy bright and that looks really dark, I feel like they don't um, really get as intense as, you know, some a really pigmented powder might. That little bit of creaminess in these products, when you dip your brush in, it's like it keeps you from picking up too, too much. I wasn't wild about the bronzer, but I think the blush is absolutely fantastic. They're kind of like a, a satin finish on both of the products in here. I just love the way that blush really popped on the cheeks, but doesn't have any sort of a powdery appearance at all. It was really cool to experience the different formula. I don't really like it any better than the blush bronzer powder duos that e.l.f. has had for a long time, just because I think those, you know, you stick your brush in, it's a little bit goes a long way, and in a sense, I almost find that a little bit easier to use. Here, there was a little more work involved to pick up, especially the bronzer product that's in this compact. Let's talk about these eyeshadows here. I have them in the shades Molten Bronze, so that's this really warm, shimmery bronze. There is a little bit of sparkle going on in that shade, and also Rose Gold, which seems like more of a champagne, like very, very soft blush type color, as opposed to a really golden type shade. I dabbed the Molten Bronze shade right on the outer part of my lid, and up into the crease, and then I used a brush from Real Techniques that I think is just ideal for this texture. It's called the Shading Brush, and you just kind of dab over it, work it into the crease. They blend out pretty easily, and I did find I had plenty of time to blend it out. It didn't set too fast, um, but the nice thing about these is that they do eventually set, and they don't stay feeling dewy or tacky on your skin. I also blended a little bit of the darker shade just barely onto the lower lash line as well, and once that was all blended out, I used the rose gold um, more on the inner part of the lid. And I think that shade's just really beautiful. I could see that as being a fun kind of, you know, spotlight any look that you're wearing. And I do really like the way the look came out. It's just kind of an effortless, easy type thing. However, is it as easy as just reaching for a powder duo or even, you know, shadow sticks that I think can, I don't know, maybe be controlled a bit more easily on the eyes? I don't know about that. Like, I like these. I think they're beautiful. I just don't see myself reaching for them over and over to create a look. I have had some, you know, doe foot applicator cream type eyeshadow formats in my collection before, and I just didn't find myself reaching for them a lot. I feel like they're kind of marketed as low maintenance, quick and easy, but I still don't find them to be as quick and easy as just uh, doing a quick powder eyeshadow look, but that's just me. They do have really nice staying power, and I could see especially this shade definitely being like a one-step look if you wanted to put it all over the lid and blend blended up into the crease. You know, it's just that kind of a shade that has enough sheen and, you know, it's like a one shadow cream shadow look if you wanted to do that. To me, the star of this Aqua Beauty line are these kind of gel stain type products. I can't even remember the formal name that these were given on the website, but to me, they are a gel type stain. They're not a totally like liquid consistency. You don't see liquid running all throughout like you might see if this were Benetint or one of those truly liquid stains, but they're all three gel consistencies and I really like the way they wear even after I feel like they've set like I've been wearing this one for probably 20 minutes now and it doesn't feel 100% dry on my lips and I kind of like that because I think there's some comfort with that and it's not gonna be the most long wearing like it's gonna look exactly the way it first did when you applied it after six hours in the day pass it's going to fade but what pleasantly surprised me about these was how they faded really evenly 
at least on my lips. Maybe it was just a day where I wasn't doing a lot of like licking my lips or messing with them too much, but the shade just seemed to lighten across the board and it didn't look patchy. And if a shade's gonna fade and do it that way, I really don't have a problem with it. It's when they wear off in that patchy, really obvious, like rim around the lips type way. That's what I don't like. But I do have a bit of a question with these shades. I have Red Orange Wash, Rouge Radiance, and Dewy Berry. There's no doubt that this is the berry shade, right? But these two, this is the one labeled Rouge Radiance, this is the one labeled Red Orange Wash, and I feel like this one, the Rouge Radiance, has much more of an orangey tint to it. The orangey one is kind of in the middle. That's the one labeled Rouge Radiance, and it definitely has the most orange to me. I really don't know if these were mislabeled. I took a closer look on the website and the one that it claims to be red orange on the website really does look like the more red orange one, but Whatever the case may be, my favorite in the group is the one labeled Rouge Radiance. That's the one I've got on right now. That's the one I think is the warmest red. This goes on so full color. I think it's beautiful, but it's still like that gel. It feels so light. I can't even explain how light these feel, but they're not quite as drying as some of the straight up just liquid stains that offer nothing added moisture wise to your lips. So I love that color. To show the one labeled Red Orange Wash going on, um, I feel like it's more sheer than the other two. It takes a little more building up to show more color, but I do think that's a pretty shade and it's the one that really does kind of remind me of Benefit's Benetint. And then the Dewy Berry is beautiful as well. Um, it's going to be more your cool, more pink involved in this shade. Last I checked on the website, the Dewy Berry was out of stock, but this Rouge Radiance um, is definitely like my pick. There are a couple of new brushes that I ordered off of Elf's website. They've got a new stipple brush and it looks like this. This is the old stipple brush. It might be the slightest bit larger, like if you look at them head on like that, I think there's maybe a little more surface area involved with that brush. But as far as the length of the bristles, they're pretty much the same. They behave very similarly just to stipple a blush product on. In fact, my original probably stays a little bit more stiff. There's a slight bit more tendency for these bristles to bend as I apply something to my cheeks. But my point here, I guess, is that if you've already got the small stipple brush, I don't find this new one to be some major improvement. Improvement. And it's kind of the same story with this highlight brush that they put out. There is a little more difference here with the small tapered brush because as you can see here the brush hairs are a little bit longer but it's still like that tapered kind of small egg shaped cut. The small tapered brush because it's smaller and because there's a little less movement you know to the bristles um, I feel like it packs on product in a bit more concentrated way. I don't really see that much difference between these. I was perfectly satisfied with my small tapered brush but the only benefit to the new one, you're wanting an even lighter um, application of, say, a highlight right up in this area. This might give you a bit more subtle look. Now, I haven't had a chance to experiment with every shade in both of these, but there are a couple of new cream blush palettes that e.l.f. has in the studio line. They've got one labeled Bold, and it really does have some poppin' shades there, um, like a really deep red, a dark berry shade, a very bright pink, and a bright coral. And then they have one labeled Soft that I think the lighter skin tones might really enjoy, you know, soft kind of warm pinks. There's a nice peach in there as well. Elf really has a nice cream formula. I really liked it with their um, cream contour palette. I love the way the shades blended in. It wasn't too much work to blend in. They didn't uh, have some kind of unusual texture once you've got them blended in on your skin. You know, they just kind of meshed with the overall texture of your skin. And I find these to be very much the same. So I'm really glad that they're expanding on that formula, putting out all these cream blushes. If you're a deeper skin tone and you want some really vibrant cream blushes, which sometimes you run across some very vibrant powder blushes, but I guess in my makeup experience, I don't have a lot of really um, deep and rich cream blushes, so this might be kind of a unique find. Another palette that I did mention in my Best in Beauty video that I'm loving so much, so I won't talk about it too much here, but it's the Total Face Palette absolutely love this. Uh, now it's a very soft palette. I really like how there's a pinky toned and a peachy toned blush in there. There's something you can use for a very soft contour and this shade is so cool. I love that highlight. I just dust it all over the face because it's not too shimmery. It's a little bit toned down. I kind of compared it to the Hourglass Dim Light but a bit more shimmery take on that shade. So it's a beautiful little no-brainer all-in-one palette. Now you guys remember when e.l.f. first released a 
bunch of 10 color eyeshadow palettes. Well, they're tacking onto that line with one called Nude Rose Gold. What does this one look like, my friends? Very much like the Naked 3. And I did do some swatches of this. I think there are some beautiful shades in here. I like that there are a few mattes with this color, um, this shade right here, and then we have kind of a deeper way to create some contrast with that tone. It's good for me, but not great, because naturally I am comparing it to the texture of Urban Decay Shadows, and I did decide to go ahead and swatch out for you um, the full Naked 3 palette, which does have two more shades than this one does. And you can definitely see some tones really matching up. Certain colors are very close dupes, but I think it shows in the swatches how the Naked 3 palette is just a little more vibrant. And one time when I was comparing like a really low cost dupe type palette to a higher end palette, somebody kind of said, you know, how dare you? How, why would you think that something that cheap would measure up to something that's three times the price or whatever? And I do think I have found some great dupes that that have been super low cost and have a really, you know, hit it dead on. So I do look for potential dupes in low cost products with the expectation that I may find something that's really, really top notch quality. With this, I think it's a pretty palette. I have done a couple of looks with it that I've really liked, but it just doesn't have the same amount of impact as the Naked 3. Some might see that and think, that's okay, you know, I'll take a slightly more sheer take on those shades. I just want something similar. This is something similar for sure. I got a couple of these L double-ended lipsticks. They're day-to-night lipsticks, they say, but I think they're really great for creating that ombre effect as well. This one is called The Best Berries, and this one is called Need It Nudes. So I did uh, apply these on my lips so you could kind of see what I'm talking about here. They're very creamy lipsticks. They go on super smooth. I love this kind of classic rosy pink shade, and then you can definitely mix in the darker tone, or you could wear them as two totally different lipsticks. And as you can see, you're not getting a ton of lipstick products product in here. For me, one who owns a lot of lipsticks and doesn't go through a lot of lipsticks very quickly, um, that doesn't bother me. And if you're into kind of the soft, tan, light brownish nudes, I think you'll really like the Need It Nudes duo. I can't say enough of how super creamy these are, and the lighter end is just a perfect kind of tan nude color. And then you bring in the other end, it's a little bit of a rosy brown. I just love the combo of those two shades. Last but not least, I need to mention this e.l.f. Runway ready lip palette. Now this absolutely puts another lip palette that I spent way too much money on, it, it puts it to shame. Like this is awesome. This is a great lip palette find. If you're looking for something with a great shade variety and a palette of actual lipsticks, not just lip glosses, um, this is awesome. I really think there's one sheer shade in here and it's this super dark one. And I don't mind that being a little bit sheer because look, it's still vibrant. You know, it's still got something to offer, but there's a nude, a creamy pink, a little bit more of a purpley orchid type shade, a warm red, a really rich berry red, red and then this sheer super dark berry. And I just think the quality is great. It's a slim compact palette. It's the size of those eyeshadow palettes that I mentioned. They give you a totally um, usable lip brush in there. You've got the mirror and it really is the kind of thing I need and want a lip palette to be because if I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go on a trip. I don't want to load down my bag with a bunch of bulky lipsticks, you know, five or six different shades. Here, look at all the different shades. Like you could get pretty much any look you might need, not to mention the fact that you can easily mix and blend and create your own shade out of this. And the fact that they truly are like what you see is what you get type colors in here, I'm sold. So those are the new e.l.f. products I've been trying. Just wanted to give you a big roundup of what I thought. I know there are even more new things beyond what I've talked about in this video. So, you know, an update will probably be coming. But I hope this was helpful and thank you guys so much for taking time to watch. I'll see you later. Bye.